And now, Hangar 56 Media presents Spike's Car Radio, a downloadable cars and coffee, hosted by writer, comedian, and automotive enthusiast, Spike Ferriston. Now, here's Spike. Hi, everybody. Here we are, uh, Wednesday, Spike's Car Radio Day. Good to be with you. We're at uh, Zuckerman's Place in Baldwin Hills on a Saturday night. We're all relaxed. We're fed. Uh, it's cold Friday. We feel... Oh, it's Friday. It You're right. Friday, Boy, yeah. look. I, I'm losing my I'm mind. That's how relaxed you are. Yeah. Uh, we did, and we're going to, I think, try to do these little Instagram lives before the show so you can see uh, all the preparation we do. We sit around, and we exchange cigars, uh, and we decide what to eat, and then we record. Um, so uh, if you missed the one uh, on Friday night at 7 o'clock, um, keep an eye on my Instagram stories. Anyway, Tony Dow is on the show. Leave it to Beaver. Uh, Tony Dow is not just Wally from Leave it to Beaver. He's a friend of Fireball. Fireball, who's, you know, he's working my puppet strings. He's got me under his control. It's, everything is about Fireball. Uh, Tony Dow also has a coloring book, but Tony Dow is also a car guy and collects cars. And an and, animal guy. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk a little bit uh, more about that. Um, let's talk about cars, though, Zuckerman. I'm sure uh, I wanted to talk about the BMW M4 competition. Oh, yes. Um, but, but I think, and I'm sure you, like me, got a million DMs about this GT3 Touring. Uh, they will not be selling a manual transmission in California. You cannot order it. For one year, maybe. What, what does that mean? What do you mean? So apparently, and this is, you know, Zuckerman can speak about this, but... Well, let's it, set it up first. It yeah. was a sound consideration. With the manual yeah. gearbox, it violated sound levels yeah. so for cars. So it's Porsche's interpretation of a California law. A, a Porsche lawyer looked at it and said, we shouldn't do this. We could get in trouble for doing this. Apparently, the law is being changed. Um, so, but it, 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 it law is being changed in what direction? What do you mean? To make it more stringent or less? Uh, uh, or to be I, I, unclear, the law clearer. Unclear. They they said that they sh- it, it was it was worded a little weaselly. It was like we should be able to sell the car for the 2023 model year because of this law being changed. But maybe they won't. Uh, if but, a Jaguar X Type uh, can <laughs> be legal in California, F Type, F Type, yeah, F Type. What, what yeah, it sorry, is, but F-type. what it is is the way the way those noise regulations work. It's like in top gear at xrpm and and just because of the way that it's a six-speed transmission instead of a seven-speed so that the top gear is lower than it would be on the pdk one see again this is more next door this is those people racing on sunset and this is the way to, to to quiet that down is to make these cars quieter i just never thought of a gt3 touring as a loud car i mean you, we had one zuckerman well, did you ever in the go in that thing and think that was too loud at I nine thousand rpm it's you know it's, i okay i thought my rs 4.0 was loud inside because there was such a such a lack of sound deadening material i think that it, people like to get excited about things boo-hoo you get a PDK for a year, boo-hoo. Or you get a car out of state. There's been plenty, over in the course of history, there's been plenty of 49-state cars <clears throat> oh, that, yeah. that owners in California have managed to enjoy out of state, sometimes but in I, state. But uh, let me, let me ask, about it. Johnny, let me ask you this yeah, question, because yeah, yeah. Zuckerman and I were discussing it. Neither of us know the answer. Is it that you can't order a GT3 Touring manual from the dealer or that you will not be able to register a GT3 Touring in the state of California? I think it's both. And and let me, let me just clear one thing up, uh, and this is, everyone thinks differently, but this is 100% true. There is no mechanical difference between a Touring and a wing car. They are the same, the suspend, they, they, the, the, a Touring is heavier because they take the wing off, but they put a hydraulic wing on the back. So to compensate for that, they make the suspension, you know, I don't know, two percent in one direction different than the wing car. But other, other than that, they come the same assembly line, same parts, same everything. So everyone th- assumes that the touring rides better. It doesn't. It's the same. Uh, the front end's identical. Uh, engines identical. Everything. So then, it also means my interpretation. It, are you, they you, saying it's quieter? How does the PDK it's quieter? The gears again. It, it's the so same. yeah. It's it's the gears. And it's how it's how. Whatever, I don't know this law, but it's like. It's going to be at like, you know, 55 or some stupid idiot number, 50 miles an hour uh, in top gear. So, you know, right, in top right. gear I get it. in a PDK, you're in seventh and it's like a double overdrive gear. And in, in remember the GT3 six speed, it's a racing gearbox. 
So six could be one to one. It could be direct. So right. at that, you know, it could be like three. So what other cars something. are affected by this? None. Do we know? But, but, but well, again, it but, seems but, like weirdly that this one car has been well, singled out. Is. Porsche's lawyers are interpreting it that way. That's right, the way right. they uh, are interpreting scared it. Scaredy cats. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why I never heard of German scaredy cats. Scared oh, they're cats. scared of everything. Oh yeah, no, no, no. scared the cat. We yeah. can't do this. <clears throat> well, they, you know. So, but anyway, I'm gonna. I, I meant to call Porsche this week and get. To, I, I don't really. Doesn't really affect me that much. So I haven't really been. But I'm gonna. I know of all the things to have to worry about. Well, it's just like, like as Paul said, boo hoo. Like get get a wing. Car. And the simple workaround: Montana plates. Nevada plates. Yeah, you got to buy it out of state. That's the only thing. Okay. Do you have to buy it out of state, too? Yeah. They do, well, they will, buy they will, it in Arizona well, Dean, and drive Dean, it. Dean said we could have it delivered to another right. state, it's right? It's a courtesy. He'll have, it, he'll have a different deal. Like, you know, sometimes Dean will, will arrange for our friend in New York to take right. delivery of a car in New York that Dean I see, handled I see. the order of. Right. God, you're fucking killing me with this smoke. Why do you have to <laughs> yeah, blow you're this blowing shit? It, hey. right in my All face. I do is complain I want the about the smoke. To know. <laughs> I, I don't like I want all the listeners to know this time. <laughs> yes. I like it when he says all the listeners. Oh, Were some of them like not that. listening before it's like then? like Bernie Mac, like, dear America. <laughs> now I'm going to tell all the listeners, all not the just listeners half know. the listeners. These guys are fucking assholes. <laughs> they blow this shit right in my face. And they know no how sympathy. much Nobody I hate has sympathy. I cigars. Don't blow it in your face. That's, that's yeah. You it's a, he does. We say it every oh, week. Well, you drop the ash. I ash on your beautiful furniture. We don't. It's it's hard to control the really? air. Yeah, it's it hard. is. It's hard for me. I to sit live. at my picnic picnic table and the air blows in a million different directions. It's the shape of this thing here. Can we get oh, back yeah. to the show? Anyway, that's a, that, that's enough on the GT3 touring. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about. It's that not even out yet. Yeah, and we're not worried about it because this. You know, we believe there are other greater things coming. Uh, a GT1, maybe. Uh, I, I'm about 60% on that rumor. It makes sense. Why wouldn't makes they? Sense. Yeah, why wouldn't they? Um, but like uh, I think we said before the show, and um, we'll say it here, we there was no pushback. We I didn't hear from anyone um, about that uh, rumor when we uh, said it on the podcast. And usually I hear from a lot of folks that can confirm different aspects. Operation Mincemeat. Yeah, Dissim- so dissimulation. <clears throat> Look, either we we got a scoop and we'll be first to it, or you know, uh, Dean Maroney's information is bad. <laughs> he stole two hundred grand, <laughs> and he's we'll never see him again. Yeah, yeah. Did he? You talked to him. He came in. Did he take? He, did he take any other uh, deposits? He took umbrage that we made fun of him for stealing the money. You, uh, you mean? And, and then, and then, of course, he had to admit that we've been great. For business, so uh, and then he said that that he, he was going to get in trouble for revealing this. Here, and let's do a smoke test. Watch, I'm going to blow it this way and see if it comes. The smoke is if you don't blow it at me, it's much better. better. When you blow it at me, so I had a funny okay. one. I that one worked a little better. Yes, you didn't blow it at me. I had a funny one the other week where there's apparently there's a new Ferrari Dino, for lack of a better thing, but it's going to be like a a V6 hybrid Ferrari that's based on that Maserati S- MC20, yeah. right? Yeah. So I broke the story. And then uh, I said, maybe it'll be the SF60 or whatever, S, whatever that, you know, the SF90. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, maybe it's the 60 because it's a V6. And the Ferrari guy was like, no, because the 90 was for 90 years, so it can't be called that. I'm like, oh, okay, then what's the real name? And he didn't, you know, he didn't deny it. Ah, he didn't say ah, it wasn't you happening. stumbled onto He's it. He's just ah, like, you got the name wrong. You ah. So, Joe, if you're listening, it. ha-ha. Well, well, there you go. I tell you, I am not so much focused on brand new cars. I've got a couple. Of classic cars coming in Ferriston, I think. Here we go. About, mm. And I'm excited. Tell me. <clears throat> tell me. This is where Zuckerman surprises us with purchases. Yes, I do keep it. A 97 C2 cab, 993 Cabriolet. Oh, you bought that car, yeah, the Sloney car. Over mm-hmm. red. It's from Sloan, our friend Sloan, Brett Sloan in Connecticut. It was his car for a year, and wow. it's a tasty little number. It's got about 35,000 miles on it, and it's going to be a car that I think you're going to want to share with me, Ferris. Yeah, it's a pretty it's car. Perfect. I looked at it. And it's just it's just the right thing that you need. It's the Goldilocks car for driving around traffic <clears throat> in L.A. I agree. Right? It's a nice thing. You like these cars, and, right, and rightfully so, these cars that are easy to drive, that you tend to drive, and put lots and lots of miles on them. Right, and and I like those cars, too, Zuckerman. Yeah. I agree. Comfortable. What the else did you get? conditioning works well. Well, well, well. Well, well, well. A 1990 
190E 2.5 16-valve oh, yeah. Evo 2 with Lovely. the DTM body kit. Lovely car. Good, wow. good. Well bought. Well bought. That's That completes your collection. 5,000 miles, my dear friend. Yeah, that's good. That's yes. good. Wow. And so are you familiar with that car? Yeah, it has the performance of a 2015 Ford uh Fusion hybrid, but exactly. yes, they're lovely cars. Exactly, <laughs> and that's the point. It's the yeah. point is not about competing against today. No, no, but no. getting into the <clears throat> mindset of them and of then and what Mercedes was do, doing to try to counter the juggernaut of the E30. Yeah, and three. And those those cars were raced in DTM, and they were they were both like madly successful. They they dominated that era of motorsports. Yeah, they're, and it was, they were, it was they're a different very approach. Cool. The Benz approach was much more expensive. It's got all of that body kit, but it's got three settings inside the car uh, yep. for high, medium, and low. Yeah, and, and it had, very a, it had a bigger engine, you know, typical Mercedes, more power, more torque. So, yeah, no, I, those are sweet. Plus, it's a dogleg <laughs> transmission, if, if I remember yep. correctly. Just like the Evo 2 yeah. E30 I have. Yeah, yeah. So, so for racing, real racing, bo- that's awesome. We're going to take those two out, me and you. All right. And we will go on a little drive. I love it. Only one will come back. <laughs> Two go in, one comes out. <laughs> if you're you looking for a car like Zuckerman, you need only go to collectingcars.com. Uh, these guys are putting out cars every day, auction style. you got to check them out, collectingcars.com. They've got great content on YouTube. Check them out there and subscribe. They've got a video right now on a 911 reimagined by Singer. And, of course, the Chris Harris 100 million pounds celebration video. They've they've done 100 million pounds of uh, of sell, sold cars. That's a lot. A lot and to check. celebrate, Chris Harris takes his GT3 Touring, loudly does donuts. Um, they've got a lot of great stuff this week if you want to check it out. Um, they have a new LA office and cars are coming in a 1995 993 Carrera RS, one of just 1,104 ever built. What color? Um, let's see. Euro spec car that spent a little time in Japan, finished in polar silver. That's Ooh. a delightful, Ooh. fishy blue silver with a great history. They've got a 2019 Audi RS5 Sportback. Sophisticated all-rounder equipped with carbon trim package. Uh, that is Sonoma Green. Ooh, the best color. That's a, that, that's a nice car. Yeah, black Ooh, Napa leather, nice. and that only has 6,600 miles. Uh, a 1948 Ford Funk Brothers tractor. Uh, an original Ford N-Series tractor customized in period by the Funk Brothers. And uh, Jaguar E-Type from 1961. Flat 438 Roadster. Uh, an Early opalescent. Car, Silver blue, which is also uh, polar silvery. Lovely. Very Uh, uncomfortable. Very beautiful. Yeah, yeah, very beautiful cars. Yeah, I like those early 3.8s. Torquier, revier than the 4.2s. Yeah, it's a great place. If you don't know where to get a car, go to collectingcars.com. Collectingcars.com. They got the commenters there. You can ask questions before you bid. They also have a daily email you can sign up for. Collectingcars.com. Uh, they sent us some hats, guys. Look right over there. We got three hats, three T-shirts, and three uh, uh, pads, white pads. It. Nice. I need those. Those I need, are great. I need the hats. Huh? I need the hats. Hats. There they so, are. They're right yeah, there yeah. for you. Thank you, by the way, collecting cars for sending I'm that go over. Ash on one. Why sell your car anywhere else? List for free. Sell for free. Hassle free. Our only sponsor today. Thank God. What about Blue Chew? I have just created a new Blue Chew ad and a new Blue Chew device. It's like the Pez candy dispenser for your Blue Chews. Can you imagine what that dispenser would look like? Yes. Let me guess. <laughs> Where do you keep it? Your Where horrible, you keep- your horrible penis, Zuckerman, right? <laughs> it's the Zuckerman penis <laughs> Pez dispenser of Blue I Chew. Just pop it in your mouth. Yeah. Suck it no, down. It's <laughs> a butt plug. You store it there. Oh, that's ah. what we're doing. Yeah. Can you guess? <laughs> look, Blue Chew. I, I don't even think Blue Chew's in business. After last week, we had our four-year anniversary show where we talked about no, it's crickets, nothing, nobody. You did you send me a video of another podcast that no. that lost oh, Blue yes. Chew as a yes. sponsor too? Yes, they and the same thing happened. 
They told him, say anything you want. Yeah. And he talked about taking Blue Chew to have sex with his dog. And then, <laughs> and it, so they must have decided this is a really bad idea between Spike Scar Radio and this other well, Wait, wait, wait. I, I'm new. What the hell did you say? <laughs> we were just talking about if I could eat we, the Blue no, Chew. No, no, I was not. <laughs> yes, you, you were. I he said. was saying if his penis had a parrot beak and could crunch Blue Chew's little and teeth, eat, eat them that way. Or snort them through your hose. <laughs> Oh, faster. And what oh, a surprise. Yeah. They don't want to advertise I, on the show anymore. I, I, I was totally surprised. Said, what? How can this be? Well, at least you're not screwing your dog, right? That's- Wait, you don't want to try the product and you're saying that a parrot beaked penis should chew them? No, snort it. I mean, snort it. Really? You're upset? Oh, I remember you. You had some cracks as well. Are you chewing gum during dinner? This that is was your Is that gum you're chewing during dinner, honey? <laughs> yes, why are you chewing gum? <laughs> Spit out your gum. Spit out your gum. Chew, 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 chew. <laughs> okay, go. Now, now, now. Oh, no. Oh. Koji. Koji. Oh, my God. Oh, Things got out of hand there. Koji lost Whoa. it and yanked us and pulled us down. Is everything still there? We're still we're going. So good. Um, Lieberman, yes. it's time to do, what is Lieberman driving? I'm driving a BMW N4, but uh, so I'd ugly. rather hear what you're driving. I'm driving a uh, Dodge Durango Hellcat. Ooh, so, wow. 710 Juicy. horsepower. Is that here? It's right out front. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 710 horsepower, uh, seat six. I took it up Angeles Crest this morning. My friend Sean got in front of me. He was in a Honda Civic Type R, and he's a very, very talented driver, and I was on his butt. It hung with him. All the way up, which I was, I've never laughed so hard. Um, had to turn the traction control all the way off because it was bogging in the corners. But once it was free to dance, like. What does bogging damn. in the corners mean? You know, it's just, it's, it's detecting wheel slippage because it weighs 5,700 pounds and was slipping a little wow. bit. But uh, so, you know, the, the, the stability control, it kind of cuts the engine power. But uh, so if you turn stability control off, then you can keep your right foot down and do all your braking with your left feet and keep up with the. Really good little Honda. So. How old is that chassis? It's it's old. So that actually was part of the Daimler Chrysler era. Yes. So that's what they got in the divorce was the last generation uh, uh, GLE, whatever they're called actually, and the GLS. So they were structurally the same. So it's a, it's a unibody with like vestigial frame rails. So it's actually like pretty trucky. I love so heavy. how Dodge just milks the hell out of a platform. It's brilliant. How they really, they just keep you coming back. They yeah. More horsepower, yeah. more horsepower. It's They've brilliant. got a 15, 20 year old But it chassis. handles really well. It just, uh, it, it's shocking how much fun this car was. Yeah. I, I would rather have that Jeep that I was talking about last time, but like, uh, this thing's incredible. It's one year only. They're all sold out already, I think. Did I you mean, say how much they cost? I think it's like ninety. I, it was wow. eighty-eight thousand for, wow. for wow. seven hundred and ten horsepower. Yeah, it's totally worth it. Because I mean, it, w- what, what? No other SUV makes that much horsepower. You know, I mean, uh, uh, an Urus is six forty-one. I had an Urus this weekend too, uh, and this is more power. You know, and it's 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 kooky. Like I had on the G meter, it was pulling one point zero eight Gs left and right. So it's like balanced, and that's crazy. What is for the an most SUV. Gs you've pulled in a car? Oh, probably 1.5 or something like right. in Senna, something right. like that. But no, yeah. but, but anything over one G, <clears throat> that means that yeah, the it can it's it can it, it's the it's pulling itself and a little bit more than itself, and it weighs almost three tons. Right. With right. me, it's three tons. You know. There so, you go. <laughs> it was hustling. admirable. But yeah, yeah. the acceleration G was even more. It was like 1.12. So it was like it thinks scoots. Let's talk so. about this uh, M4 because yes. it's a curious car. People have been asking me about it. Um, it's a Dravet gray metallic. Um, it is a hundred thousand dollars. Zero to sixty M4 competition. <clears throat> M4 comp zero to sixty three eight twin turbo inline six four hundred seventy three horsepower. Very likable car. Very lots of carbon fiber. Yeah, two does, doors. Kooky seats. Does it have the kooky seats? It's got here. It, there's uh, there's some things I you know it's just not the car for me because I'm not like if I were twenty five and I had a little bit of money I can't think of a better car. Uh, that to drive it's really sure. a great handling car and it's really nice so i'm just the wrong guy to really talk about it the seats though 
and you're the perfect guy to ask about this. They're adjustable sports seats. They're great. They they hold you like a regular sports seat, but you can make all the adjustments of almost like an 18 way seat. But it doesn't have the carbon fiber crotch insert. It does. Oh yeah, those it are does. good seats. Yeah, yeah, yeah it does. Seats. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a great seat. It's the best seat for like going fast. It's miserable for like schlepping across LA at. 25 miles an I hour took on the it to Dodger Stadium and it was a little difficult. Yeah. Yeah, to get to be in Take traffic. Take your wallet out of your back pocket. Well, I think anything that's not a Model Y with that auto driving, full auto in traffic right now doesn't measure up. Uh, so, but, so, but this is a great car. But the, the question for you is who is this car for? Am I wrong that this is a, a younger man's $100,000 I mean, car for a 25 year old? Well, so, you know, I said who's got some money, a successful yeah. young man. I mean, so look, you can get you can get into an M4 non comp, which which would have you know seventy four thousand ish to start. Uh, it's severely down on torque. You know, the, the, right. the torque in the car up front is four hundred seventy nine pound feet, and it's four hundred six for the non competition. So it's a, it's a big difference. And you know, BMW says zero to sixty three eight. I think we got three five. Yeah, with it feels quicker four door. for sure. So the yeah. so the two door will be even quicker because yeah, it'll be hundred yeah. pounds lighter. Um, I, I, I've only driven the M3 comp, but, it, you know, I, I described it as the five-legged man at the ass-kicking party. It's just, it's unbelievable what they accomplished yeah, yeah. with that car. It's yeah. just, I, I would love to have one just to, just only for weekend drives. It would, I would never, like, go to the supermarket or anything because of the, the seats, but, like, when you're driving <laughs> in the canyons. <laughs> the supermarket stops. Yeah. But, I didn't go to the supermarket in it. Yeah. But, like. I didn't it, want to. In the canyons, I mean, it's it almost handles, huh? unbeatable. It's, it, it's sort of like when the GTR came out mm-hmm. and suddenly all these other supercars were like, yeah, you're not really there. You know? Yeah, yeah. And it's sort of how this is in terms of, like, absolute idiotic, stupid performance. It, it's really good. Walk me through the various modes. So, on the steering wheel, you've got M1 mode, M2 mode, then you've got the M modes, and then then you've got more adjustments that you make on the shifter knob. So yeah, so well, M1, that I found to be a little too much to, you know, it, think it is, about. It's daunting. So so M1 and M2 are both fully programmable, so you can you can do both. So for I'll give you a for instance. So typically M1, I would set it up where it's like everything is in sport, not sport plus. Right. And then traction control because this now is variable traction control. So like mm-hmm. ten is all the way on, zeros off. So I'd put it at five. Whereas right. M2, I would program. Full sport plus everything, traction control all the way up. <clears throat> yeah, and so yeah, you know, just handy. And then, but if you want to make an adjustment, because sometimes, because it's a, it's a, it's actually an automatic transmission. It's not a dual clutch, but you know, you might say I have it on like three, and it shifts really hard. You might say I don't need those crazy shifts. So right. while you're going without having to go into the menu, you can just hit a button on the thing, or like this road sucks. I'm just gonna click down the shocks or something like that. So you can do fine adjustments. After you program, right, right, so, that makes sense. Yeah. What are you driving, Zuckerman? Why don't you take it? I'll leave it here for you. Mm. You're a BMW guy. Yeah. Here's your moment. I, I gotta go to. I gotta go to Malibu. See, Malibu. this is what he says. He wants press cars. He's just offered one. And he goes. Hey. I don't want to. <laughs> I've got. I just what are you, got. Why? What are you driving? I'm driving the '92 964 RS Touring. Mm. It just got details. Oh. It's so ah. tasty. It's so perfect. That's actually. I, I saw that thing in your other garage. Hey, Kate, yeah. can you turn the lights on here for us? That's that car uh, Zuckerman's is so daughter. sweet. That yeah, is so such a sweet car. And that's like one of 70 or something? For Tourings, there's only, yeah, there were 75 or 6. Right, so do you want to take it? You want to take the Touring? I, do, I want you to enjoy your weekend, Zuckerman. I um, do but that. I have that car till Tuesday, so if, if any time between now and then you want it, you can take it. The, the the M4 is extreme. I would love, and I think they're gone, sadly, but I'd love to get your opinion of an M2 CS. As a BMW that, collector, <clears throat> I would really like that. To yeah. compare it to the 2011 one M. I yeah, have. That yeah. would be very Cause interesting. Because I think you'd throw the one M in the garbage after driving the, the, the M2 CS. Like it's Really? Right. In, it's, you know, the garbage. Garbage. there's just certain cars that, like, they get everything right. The engineers don't have any limits, you know, like the accountants are, like, locked in a closet or something. And to me, like, I know I know the M3, M4, you know, has better ultimate performance and it's quicker and all that. But I would I would take the M2 in a heartbeat. Some things just taste better. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, yep. just, it's just perfect. I what love was car. this uh, hypercar event the, that oh. you were telling me about? Yeah. I think so, I was invited to it, too, but they decided to write you a check yeah, yeah. and uh, save me it, the it, trouble. Yeah, the check And I saw, you, I saw you on stage. Yes. Emceeing a couple events. Yeah, so, so it's called Hypercar Invitational, and they get, like, I think it was, like, 100 people. And where was it? It was at Laguna Seca. Right. 
and it's two days at Laguna Seca, and, and, and the crazy part was Sunday was an unlimited noise day. So, like, there was an AMG CLK GTR. There was F1 cars. There was a Porsche 910. Just run as hard as you want. There was McLaren F1s. I mean, it was, it was nuts. So, wait, was there are there. noise issues at the racetrack that you can't run a race Oh, yeah, car? at Laguna Seca, they have crazy because noise. Because people live... Somewhere close to that is that it? The sound That's travel? part of it. Have you I, ever heard that before, Zuckerman? I've never heard that. I've well, heard. Laguna, I just assumed a racetrack you can do whatever you want all the time. Well, Laguna Seca is worst case scenario because not only are they building houses and for Everyone years it was it was, it was it was safe because there was a military base there and they can't they can't put it, build houses there because right. there's like unexploded ordnance everywhere. But <laughs> the way Laguna Seca is situated, you can <laughs> you can like we light up. <laughs> <laughs> I got a guy uh, like hey, with blown off. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what yeah. is that over there? Go oh. fetch. I need another nine nine four. Explosions uh, equal Porsches. Yeah. <laughs> but the way Laguna Seca is, if you're 12 miles away, you can hear the loud cars there. It's just because it's, it's just like a bold, natural amphitheater. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, so normally, like, most days, there's 92 decibels, which is horrible. It, it's it's so soft. You, it just sucks. And then we had Saturday was a 105 decibel day, so like a, a, a Huracan, a Lamborghini Huracan at Is there a guy lot. out there? Yeah. There's a county employee that sits in a oh, box. God. No, no, no. Yeah, when she goes to the bathroom, the, you get a radio call. Like, She's in the can, go! <laughs> <laughs> Is that true? Yeah, it's true. Wow. They also have, you ever seen a Laguna pipe? It's like a, it's uh, a pipe that points to the left, an exhaust yeah, yeah. pipe. So that's just for going by the sound booth. What happens when someone goes over the limit? Are they you, pulled from the You get a black flag. Yeah, so every, every lap you get a black flag, and if you get three blacks on one car in one you session, win? They, they pull you off. Oh. Horrible. Um, but on an unlimited day, which is super rare, never never happens outside of like pebble beach where somehow we got one for this event you could just go and it was it was it was fantastic wow i drove amg sls so were you Black driving series. other people's cars yeah, yeah 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 how many laps oh i did 50. Like, what, what did they want you to do i was like the the host mc i was like hey welcome and like, then at the track you just they said here drive my car yeah i helped out with different stuff and but then by the end it was like i made some friends and they're like you see my McLaren 765? Do some laps. Like, you didn't do enough. Get back out there. Wow, like, drive wow. my other AMG. It was yeah, awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, yeah, no, it was great. We raised over $50,000 for the San Francisco chapter of Make-A-Wish Foundation. It was It was cool. It was cool. I did that. I, like, led the auctions. <laughs> Who cares? Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. It, was like, it was a 15-year-old that had lymphoma. Like, come on. Uh, come on. Cut it out. Ah, uh, we raised yeah. my ten grand for that kid. Are you? What are you waving at? Do you think this is self-aggrandizing, Mr. Lieberman, right now, or are no, you really no, not like I make was a just wish? Trying to, I was just trying <laughs> to throw you off and, and get you to comment about. I donated my old seventy-four nine eleven to make a wish back in the day. <laughs> I always worried that the guy who took it. Uh, uh, you know, would die himself because <laughs> there was the, the suspension was I wish rusting. You would and, and, <laughs> here, yeah. take my car. Yeah, it was falling apart. I don't think it went to someone who was dying. I think they well, this sold one, it and this made money. This one was cool because this kid was 15. He had an MGB and he needed 10 grand to restore it. So it's called Adopt a Wish. So you just pay for it. And one guy stood up and said, I, I, I'll give 10 grand. So I would have cool. paid wow. for that kid if that's what is weird. Yeah, yeah, it was cool. No, one guy did. It was awesome. It was, it was, it was actually a cool moment because I was like, Guys, can I get like twenty of you to put your hands up and each pledge five hundred bucks? And twenty hands went up, and then this guy just stood up right in front of me. He's like, "I'll do the whole ten. And I was like, "Okay, you're all still on the hook for something else." You know, <coughs> auctioning, but, doing an auction from stage is horrible, hard, the most horrible job there is. I didn't mind it. Yours was fine because people were in a good mood. They were, and it's a worthy. Cause. I was it's once not- Zuckerman. I was once on stage in front of a thousand lawyers. <laughs> who did not want to be at this presentation and the network had said they said just go out we just want you to say hi you know be funny for a few minutes and and do this auction and i said what what do you mean auction you know you call around in the room and you put people on the spot and you get them to bid and i go i don't know anybody it's a bunch of lawyers from los angeles you might have been there this is 10 years ago <laughs> and and the event starts and it's death this this is a horrible audience right it's bad and the local fox news guy is uh hosting it and i'm like god damn it. i'm sitting with the fox people and i'm like i, I don't want to go up here this is a horrible horrible thing and now you've got me in a position where i've got to auction off uh tickets i forget the show unwanted tickets to cheap people but it was tickets to yeah a sitcom that was just bombing on fox just not doing well <laughs> and who wants to make the first bid 
nobody. Crickets. Crickets. You don't want to see Boston legal? And I don't go, <laughs> I don't do any of those things. And I say, I don't do that. I don't know how to, does anybody want to? And it was it was just dead silent, and it just got worse. And I'm looking at my uh, network executives there at the table, and I'm like, you better fucking start. <laughs> They're the only people. I- you bid, and they raise their hands and start bidding. And that was one of ten items I had to get through. I'll never do it again. But oh. I ended up coming back with such an appreciation of what, you know, uh, Charlie, is it, at really? Gooding? He's the oh, what he's he the best. does he's the and best. what these guys at Arm Sotheby's, the way they're able to fill the emptiness Charlie, with weird noise and talk I've, I've and to get people to open up their wallets. Fill the air with weird noise. Yeah, because noise. It's, if you look closely, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, if you look closely at any of those auctions, there, there could be two or three minutes of silence up there and you'll see him turn to David Gooding and go, uh, you drove the car, and then David will tell a little story about driving it, right? But here I am, standing in the on stage with nothing. No it way. wasn't Boston legal. It was some just your non blue chew dick in your hand, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, and you're trying not to end your career by saying something like that because the president of the network is there <laughs> on blue. Che- he's got blue chew in his pocket though. But you had a friendly audience. You had guys that wanted to show off with their money. It was small. You had gotten to know them, and you could talk about it. it How many items did you auction off? 10, 11, 12, something like that. I mean, a lot of what we were auctioning off was like, you know, get a ride in a McLaren F1 around Laguna Seca. Randy but Post. do the guys there already know those things? No, no, no one, no one has an F one. I mean, that's that's you know that's that's right. rare. Yeah. Um, and it was you know Randy Popes will drive you around Laguna Seca in a Senna GTR. So Randy holds the track record oh, of that's Laguna cool. Seca right. in a Senna. Comet, Comet. Here's the GTR. <laughs> well, you know. I know you're puking. Yeah. You, and then you might that. die. Yeah. <laughs> no, but we raised. Like, I bid four thousand dollars. I think we got like nine grand for the F one ride. I mean, it was great. It was awesome. It was awesome. That's good. Yeah. It was fun. Well, it was fun. So I won't do it next year. No, <laughs> I don't want to do anything. I'm glad you're doing all of it. Do That's it all. Good. Do it Make all. Make us look good, Lieberman. Yeah. <clears throat> well, yeah. Like, lots of compliments. People, people there. They they, they listen to the show. They, That's good. Yeah. As they should. Yeah, as they should. Well, um, speaking of listening, uh, we we we're all I think here. The three of us. Leave it to Beaver fans. <laughs> I am. I really am. Like that is one of the shows that raised me, and I would always watch that show and go, uh, why is my family not like that? Did you have that experience? <laughs> Would you go, this this dad and this mom, they're so nice. Well, yes. You know, I mean, and, yeah. and my life is nothing like this. I'm not treated with the same dignity and respect. There were, there's, a, there's a lot of yelling. There's a lot of yeah. uh, hitting. There was a throwing of a bag of uh, Thanksgiving stuffing Potatoes. at my back. Yeah. <laughs> I love my parents and my childhood was my childhood, but I've always really admired that show. You know, and so go ahead, Zuckerman. For me, it was like going to Temple. More stuff not to believe. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> it's just well not said. the way yeah, yeah. anything works. I knew that at a young age. Uh, Fireball set this interview up. I enjoyed my chat uh, uh, where, uh, where Tony kind of quieted down. Fireball <laughs> filled in. <laughs> He's now been on the show six times, I think, in the last <laughs> week. It's an all fireball all the time. Um, and 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 I learned a lot. Uh, but as, uh, what I especially loved is uh, the way that Tony Dow used to live on his boat uh, with his penguin, <laughs> with his anteater, and with his otter. Um, and I will post that picture uh, in the announcement for the show. Here is my interview with Tony Dow. <laughs> Tony Dow, nice to meet you. How are you? Hey, good to see you, Spike. How's everything with you? Where are you uh, checking in from? It's a lovely, uh, you have a lovely video quality there and a lovely audio quality, which I thank you for. Ah, well, that's good to hear. Um, It's my office where I sit and do nothing. And uh, (laughs) I like your place. Your place is very cool. This is, yes, the room above my garage. It's my, my happy happy space. What do you have on the wall there behind you? Are you collecting uh, watches, stopwatches? Uh, I was until they all stopped. <laughs> but those, seriously, those are pocket watches up there. Yeah, they're real. Yeah, I was collecting pocket watches for a while. Wow, cool Look thing to that. collect because they're actually useful. You know, I used right. to directing. I would need a watch, but then I found that the watch only inhibits you, and I, so I had to get rid of them. 
So, you know, I first met you over the television set when, when I was a kid and, and basically TV babysitted me. And I saw this family, this Leave it to Beaver family. Um, and I just thought, boy, if this is what families are supposed to be, my family isn't even close to that. <laughs> was, was, was your family the, at home, your real family, uh, much different than your TV family? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was, right? Oh, yeah. yeah, but actually, my family uh, was was great. I mean, I you know, I had uh, I had a creative mom, and although a little cranky at times. And, uh, <laughs> and then I had uh, a great father who was a designer, designed houses. And he um, he was the coolest guy around. Everybody loved him. And the only problem with our household was alcohol. You know, back in that day, everybody drank, and so that was the activity of the day. So how interesting. This, so there's a little too much drinking going on in your home, and then you'd go to this set and have this perfect family life. I mean, uh, in some ways, did you uh, uh, want the your TV family to be your real family? Uh, no, I never thought about that, but that would have been a good idea. <laughs> I, I think it was, you know, the schizophrenia of going home at night was um, probably a little too much to take. Yeah, I mean, also just, you know, how old are you when you're doing that show? I was anywhere from 12 to um, 18, 12 to 18, yeah, six Wasn't years. It, didn't it feel odd? I mean, we, you know, I, I have kids that age right now, and, you know, I have friends who have kids who are actors, and it, it's, it always struck me as odd when we started, the, the kids expect, expressed an interest in maybe acting, and I said... I just start feeling like, do you really want to work when you're 12, or you want to have a childhood? Did it feel, did it feel cool that you that you were on television and making money and had a career, or did you always feel like, you know, I, uh, uh, this is kind of stealing a little something from my childhood? You no, know, I'm sorry about this interview, but I never thought about that either. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, um, I, I was having fun, you know. It was an interesting life. I never realized what I was missing. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, it, it, it was cool. I wouldn't recommend anybody uh, get their kids into into acting unless they're going to be really careful uh, with them and um, and make sure that they don't go off the rails, which is very easy to do. But in today's world, it's not as bad because the shows only last like five shows. Yeah, right. Well, you know. we, we lasted 234 shows. So. Did, did you have your parents on set with you a lot? Yeah, we had to have a guardian, and the guardian was my cranky mom. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Wow. Yeah. So that's that's double. Are you? Do you find yourself because I've had a smaller success like you that travels with you your entire career? Like your show is what? It's been on the air now for over sixty years, right? I'm, I'm guessing it's still airing somewhere. Oh, um, it's, it's never been off the air. It's never no. been off the air since what no, year? Years. Wow. Since 57, it went on the air, and then, uh, you know, just, it never... Have you never have, have, have you made peace with the idea that you've had this lasting effect? They, whenever I do an interview now, they talk about something I did 20 years ago, this episode of Seinfeld called The Soup Nazi. It doesn't matter what I'm working on now. Every, every interview starts off like that. But I have gratitude for it now, and I'm happy that I did something that 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 people are aware of I, mean, I guess that's why we're here when we're you know writers and actors do you have gratitude for for this part that you played or does it bug you when like people like me start off a car interview asking about it um yeah i finally did you know when i got to be in my 50s <laughs> I figured it out. but no you're i mean you're the soup nazis uh is really cool because it's a super character on uh i'm probably the best television series ever made well you you understand then uh how excited i am to interview you because it really is one of the first shows that i ever watched and i i loved eddie haskell i loved wally i i nicknamed my brother wally after you, after your character. Uh -huh. um, to this day, he is the cue card guy for Jimmy Fallon, and he's known as Wally and Seth Meyer. So <laughs> you've had <laughs> lasting ripples in, in the show business world with your character. But let's talk about cars. All right. Um, Those are cooler. So you're 12, your teenage years are, are on Leave It 
to Beaver, is it at that moment that you your eyes start opening to car collecting and, and liking cars, or is it before then? No, uh, actually, uh, I was I was not a car enthusiast as I can remember. I mean, I you know every kid loves cars, so I I'm sure I I uh, you know I have my dreams about cars and what cars were cool and um, but when I got to be 16, my folks wouldn't let me have a car, which uh, my son uh, right now is buying his daughter, who's just turning six. Well, my daughter's not going he, to, he's not, she's not going to see this. But anyway, bought, bought her a brand new Acura, um, a, a Kia. Um, what's it called? K, K5, K5. Yeah. And, uh, you know, all these kids are getting these fabulous cars. They drive by a Calabasas high school and it's filled <laughs> with ladies. And, you know, all so, but it was a different world then. I didn't, uh, I wasn't allowed to have a car, <clears throat> but my dad said, well, why don't we pick out a car that we both like? So I picked out a, um, um, a Corvair, which, was a very popular car at that time, 62, mm -hmm. 1962. And uh, I always thought it was funny because it had reverse chrome wheels and it was lowered a little bit in the front and uh, had a tonneau over the back seat and everything. And here he is driving up to his construction jobs in this uh, lowered uh, Corvair, which I thought was very nice of him to do for me. <laughs> and, uh, and it was a great car, you know, it was very cool. So wait, I, I'm misunderstanding. He said at 16 he wouldn't buy you a car, but then right, he but did. He, but he would buy himself a car that I would also drive at night. I see. So he'd include you in on the purchase idea. But weren't you like, hey, I'm 16. I'm making a lot of money. Were you making more money than your dad at that point? Oh, I think so, probably. Which is <laughs> and then funny. weren't you like, hey, well, aren't I allowed to, to spend this? Is this... Is this pre Jackie Coogan accounts or post Jackie Coogan accounts? It's post, post. It's, it's after, so your money is protected. I bought a boat instead. I was, <laughs> I was a boat guy. So what, what kind of boat did you get? Um, it was an outboard. It was a glass bar, uh, sixteen foot, with an Evernerd seventy five on it. Wow! And spent all my time in Catalina water skiing and screwing around. So you would, and where would you launch this boat from? Uh, or did you have it moored in Catalina? Well, it was moored all summer in Catalina, and uh, and we'd launch it from um, I think Long Beach somewhere, or maybe San Pedro. Wow! So you had a, so these were swinging teenage years for you. You got your own boat. You're on Catalina. You're famous. It must have been pretty fantastic. That's not so hot, though. What's that? Being famous ain't so hot. What? What? At sixteen or fifteen, it's not. Why? Why isn't it? Well, it kind of interferes with your normal life, doesn't it? You, <laughs> no, you know. does it? I mean, aren't you just meeting girls? Like, who doesn't want to date Wally? That's what that's what everybody says, but um, <laughs> I never knew how to capitalize on that. <laughs> I had my buddy Paul Peterson. Now, you know, he would come over to Catalina and we'd screw around over there, and he was great at it, you know. But me, I I, I didn't know, and if I did talked to a girl and was nice and we were I could never figure out how to put my arm around her. You know? <laughs> it took forever to you know, get anywhere with these girls. I can relate to all of this and I totally understand. Let me ask you some boat questions because I'm thinking about getting a boat these days. Okay. What is that is that do you fish? Are you a fisherman? I'm not a fisherman. No. So you you just like the sport, the water skiing and cruising around aspect. Well, Catalina's got so many nooks and crannies and uh -huh. little coves that are, you know, that are uninhabited. And uh, so then what what would you do? You would you would take the ferry over for the weekend or something and then use your boat or how yeah. did it work? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. All right. So so this car of your dad's um, that he bought for you guys to share and is is cool. It's a great dad move. Um, I understand you found it found its way back to you. Yeah, isn't that that's an incredible story? Um, I get a I get a uh, an email one day, and it says, "Hey, how would you like to get your original car back?" And I said, "Who's this like? You know, what's going on?" I mean, you know. And so I didn't do anything about it for a couple of days, uh, mm -hmm. a week, and then finally I thought, well, I should probably you know email this guy back and see what's up. So I did, and he told me the whole story about how he 
and his buddy <clears throat> had grown up with this Corvair. And they did all the things that I used to do with it, except that they were mechanics. This guy was an engineer and uh, a machinist. So he worked on the car all the time. They drank beer, which I didn't do, but they drank beer in the you know garage and worked on the car. They double dated in the car, which is bad for the guy in the back seat. And um, anyway, then um, it was like the 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 main thing in their life is is in the high school and so he said my friend has passed away and i'm the the you know the guy who's taking care of it and uh he said would you, would you like it back and so now i'm thinking well it's probably a pile of junk you know I mean, I probably don't. <laughs> so anyway i said well i'll come down and take a look at it so i went down took a look at it excuse me and um it was this beautiful um, lacquer paint job that was gorgeous, and this guy had done all this work. I mean, my car was kind of a midnight blue, um, mm -hmm. and it was a normal Corvair with like 108 or 9 horsepower, whatever they had. And uh, <clears throat> now he put a spider engine in it, so all of a sudden, you know, it's 160 or whatever that is. Um, and, then, uh, and then he put a... A turbo on it and then he put uh, alcohol injection on it so now we got it up to like uh, 245 horsepower in this 2,000 pound car or wow. whatever you know whatever so and uh, he said his biggest joy or his friend told me their biggest joy was to pull up to a mus Mustang and uh, nod that they were going to take off and a Mustang guy would give him a sly smile and they would take off, and they would just blow the Mustangs away. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, the, the, the <clears throat> part of the story is that, you know, after 60 years or whatever it was, I got my first car back. Wow, wow. And you have it to this day. Yeah. Do you have a big car collection, or is that is that it? That's it. I, I, I've only had one cool car at a time. Right, right. I'm pretty practical, you know. The right. other car, the Prius. Do you think that's cool? Uh well, I do. Most people listening <laughs> don't, but we've had three of them in my house, and I've had uh, enjoyable, uh, enlightening moments in them. Uh, one, one, I remember uh, having to pick up a, a, a ride-on car for Christmas years ago, um, and they said, you got to bring a pickup truck, and I went to the Toys R Us, and I said, I have a Prius, and we were able to load that giant ride-on car right into the Prius. It, it, it fit perfectly. Wow. And it really impressed yeah. the Toys R Us loading crew and me. I was so impressed that that car could do it. Um, yeah, it's our, we, we've had four of them. Yeah, yeah, they're all right. Um, they're a great car. In the beginning, they were super um, ahead of their time. Sure, they they are the beginning of what I think is now the uh, the big changeover to electric. Uh, you know, it, yeah. Toyota really demonstrated that people will buy these things to to do a better job of keeping our air clean. Let's talk about the Fireball coloring book because I didn't know about Fireball's coloring books until I saw the Tony Dow uh, uh, book signing in Burbank <laughs> at, right. at, at that auto books uh, store. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, and I thought this is really cool. I kind of saw it separately from uh, Fireball. Um, how long have you known Fireball? I don't know. Let's see. Many what, years? Five, ten, ten years. Okay, ten so years. so he, he came up and he said, hey, let's do a coloring book. What? Tell everybody what your book is about. How did you choose the 18 or 20 so, or so pages to color? Uh, there it is well, right there. Here it is. Um, oh, you can't see it. Maybe. I can see it. Well, I can describe it. Go ahead. So that's the Corvair on the cover right there. Yeah, that's the Corvair. Right. That used to and be your dad's old guy. and yours. There's an old guy there, too. <laughs> and then, so, well, the, yeah, there you go. And there's Wally from Leave it to Beaver, and there's you now uh, with yeah. your, your golden white locks and a beard. I see you've lost the beard. And then what else do we have in there? Oh, there's... Ice there's cream. We got Wally's, ice cream. Because ice well, cream is the main uh, main force in um, Fireball in my life. Yeah, it is. What is your favorite ice cream? I love ice cream too. Uh, La Dolce. Um, you like Leche. McConnell's? I eat McConnell's. Yeah, it's. Yeah, I like Hagen <laughs> Dogs. You know. I mean. <laughs> I do too. Wow! Look at that. 
So Fireball, did you did you uh, draw all of these from scratch, or were you able to find photographs and and use uh, part of the photographs too, or is it a combination of both? Everything's drawn from scratch, except you know, obviously Tony's face. You know, you want to match, and, and right. you, know, you want to make it really good. You know, right. So, you know, the thing is that Tony's had a pretty extensive career as a director. He did uh, he did a wow. lot of shows as well. What is that? What is this one right here that seems to be a sci-fi show? Babylon 5. Oh, and you directed that? Yeah, I directed a number of them, yeah. Wow. That's really cool. That very cool. The, the neat thing is that, that this is, you know, all of his pages are autobiographical, so he gets to tell his story. Oh, wow. With each one of these images. And this was him on, on the boat, and he had a pet penguin and a bunch yeah of that's you laying on your back with a, a pet penguin well, explain yeah. that to me <laughs> <laughs> well let's see here all my life i've uh, always loved penguins so, <laughs> well we all love said, penguins somebody said well if, if you could be any animal what would you want to be and of course i didn't um think about it too much but i said well i'd like to be a penguin so <laughs> this, this friend of mine i was working on a show <laughs> And he said, well, I can get you one. <laughs> 200 bucks. And I said, huh, here it is. Here's the 200 bucks. Give me the pension. And it was great. They were, it was just the greatest. So, so this guy, <laughs> any idea where he sourced the penguin? Was it the zoo? How does a guy just have a penguin? <laughs> uh, well, remember Marine Land? Yeah. Who was head of um, penguin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he lifts a penguin and he sells it to you. And then how do you care for a penguin? Was it living at your house? Well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I built a pond for it. So it was in a pond in the valley. Did, did you know, the pond people, have icebergs? Well, I mean, that's, that's a mistake. Most people think that penguins uh -huh. live in the, in the Antarctic or Arctic or wherever the hell they live. Right. But, but um, they actually, most penguins are tropical. Um, wow. So what what was the name of your penguin? Miles. After Miles Davis. No, I wish it was, but no. Miles. <laughs> Just Miles. Miles Standish? <laughs> that is awesome. Wait, I want to talk more about penguins because, you know, my co-host loves uh, exotic animals. And we've thought long and hard about getting uh squirrels as pets never a penguin but now you know you're right penguins are really cute they're really funny are they di what do they eat what do you, what did you feed the penguin well you, you feed the penguins um let's say smelt you know fish you yeah, go to yeah. the fish thing and get a big box of frozen smelt smelt and what is the lifespan of a penguin <laughs> well i don't know because mine didn't last that long <laughs> oh no it's, it was great. I had it for three or four years. I lived on that boat, which was a 55-foot sailboat. Yeah. And uh, he lived there with me. And no I also way. had an otter. I had a, uh, a clawless otter, a Malayan clawless and, otter. And where – oh, there's a nice picture from the coloring book right there, the otter and the penguin, and, yeah. and looking at a whale. So where where was this boat moored that you had an otter and a penguin living with you? It was in San Pedro. San Pedro. And did the otter and the penguin, would they jump into the water and swim for a while and then come back? Yeah. Yeah, they would. And uh, so they, they roamed freely on the boat. They roamed freely on the boat and on the dock. Uh, wow. That is one cool. Of, <laughs> one of my favorite stories is I get a knock on my boat. And I get up. It's early in the morning. I'm going to sneeze. Excuse me. Yeah, me too. <coughs> We're all having a bad week out here with the pollen. Yeah. So anyway, um, I go up and I see that it's a guy that lives on his boat with his wife way on the far other side of the marina. And he's got my otter by the tail. And he says, listen, we love o Ollie. We, you know, we really do. But when he climbs in our bed at six o'clock in the morning and it's all wet and he dries off on my wife and my cup, <laughs> <laughs> that's going too far. So anyway, that was my one of my favorite stories about all of <laughs> Wow. That's pretty exciting that you have these two pets. That's uh, uh, I had that an a lot of fun. Huh? I had a lesser anteater at the same time. Really? Lesser wow. anteaters aren't the ones with a big bushy tail. They're, uh, mm -hmm. But they're really cute. 
Fireball, did that make it into the coloring book, the anteater? No, it didn't. <laughs> Show me a few more pages from the book. More more car stuff. Oh, that's cool. Sure. But Tony had a lot of Porsches over the years. Yeah, I, 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 after, the, after the Corvair, I, I, uh, I sold it. And now my dad or family would let me have any car I wanted. So I went out and looked for him for a car. <clears throat> and I saw a Corvette that I really liked. I mm -hmm. thought it was very cool. 62 Corvette. And I saw a um, Mercedes-Benz um, Gullwing, which I really thought was cool. Yeah, yeah. Until the guy selling it to me said, well, they're really expensive. It costs 300 bucks to get them tuned up. And I said, oh, I can't afford that. <laughs> so I went and I bought, instead of buying the million-dollar Gullwing, I bought the um, Corvair, Corvette. And uh, it was it was a great car, except that it got stolen every time I drive it. Yeah, practically. What and about what about these Porsches? What what Porsches did you own? I I owned a well. The first one was a uh, sixty three Super ninety. Uh huh. And then uh, and then I I bought a um, now this is later in life because I had the, that Porsche for a long time. Yeah. <clears throat> and then later in life, after I'd driven a couple of other things, I went back to Porsche. And I bought a well. I had a, had a nine um, nine fourteen. Is that wow? Yeah, yeah, nine fourteen. Yep. And then I and then I had a uh, a fifty two Porsche, which was really cool. <clears throat> yeah, was really a, a neat car. That's a very <laughs> early three fifty six and very you know very yeah. different. Yeah, it had a it had the weirdest windshield. The windshield came to a point. Yeah. Split window. So if you tried to look out of it, it was really distorted. Did it have? Did it have? After they had the uh, split windshield. Yeah. You know. Did it have wood inside of it? No. It, it wasn't that old. Well, not that I know of. It might right. have. Along the door panels. No. Huh? I, cannonball. Oh, it's got, got a good cannonball story. <laughs> well, yeah. When I uh, this was my Super ninety, I guess I had had it painted and it looked really great. It was in like chocolate brown, uh -huh. and uh, you know I used them all the time. I mean, I'd drive them up to the snow to to go skiing and whatever. And uh, so I was home at one time, and I wanted to get something out of the trunk, <clears throat> and I couldn't get the trunk to open because it it just wouldn't open. <laughs> so I tried for about ten minutes, and I got really frustrated. So I took about five steps back. Ran, ran forward, jumped into the air, and did a cannonball right on the hood, <laughs> which is the stupidest thing I've ever done, maybe. <laughs> and what was the result? Uh, Porsche with a big dent in the, in the hood. <clears throat> and did it open? No. No, now, now it really didn't open. No. And then did you fix the car, or did you yeah, just sell yeah. it? No, I fixed it. And, so, uh, yeah, you just lost your temper with it. Well, I think we've all uh, had moments like that. But boy, can't, I've never heard of anyone cannonballing a Porsche before. <laughs> this is pretty That would good. be interesting to find out how many people have actually done that. I, I would guess, guess one yeah, in the history one. Yeah. of Porsche ownership. And also one uh, penguin owner and otter owner on a sailboat. You are uh, unique in that sense. Yeah, I've yeah. interviewed a lot of people and not heard either of these stories. Fireball... Yeah. Uh, if we want to get the Tony Dow coloring book, oh, that's my coloring book right there. It's got the orange, yeah, right? Yeah, that's all the cool stuff you got. You, yeah, you yeah. No, I know. I got excited when, when Fireball first, asked me to do it. You're the first person who's ever put a Schwinn, an orange crate, in a book. So that's pretty cool. I find that hard to believe because the Schwinn uh, orange crate uh, crowd is a very passionate crowd. <laughs> and... Um, I'm guessing there's going to be a lot more. Those bikes were so big when we were kids. Oh, yeah. um, and, and even to track them down now, they're thousands of dollars. And, you know, even if you oh, want to just get the and, parts on eBay, you're spending so much money. Um, and my mom gave mine away when I, when I went off to college. <laughs> uh, the, 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 the coloring books, uh, Fireball, go ahead. Plug us. Where are uh, we getting them? The regular books are available on Amazon. All of our books are there, your book, Tony's, and uh, we're, we have one with Magnus Walker that just came out. But there's, right. Tony has uh, signed books available on Etsy, which is really cool. Uh, and he has his own line of trading cards as well, which is pretty fun because uh, 
the target market is, you know, older guys that grew up with trading cards and, and where coloring was certainly in. So uh, uh, those are available on, on the, the Fireball store on Etsy. But pretty much everything's on Amazon. There you go. Perfection. Well, Tony, it's uh, it's really a pleasure meeting you. Um, like I said, I'm a huge fan, and congratulations on Leave It to Beaver 60 years later. <laughs> congratulations to you for being on the Soup Nazi. But it's, you know, I, I'm being completely honest with you. It was shows like that that made me want to go into television. I, I loved your show, and All I right. loved shows like MASH, and, and when I was in New York, I thought, I've watched these things that I loved, and they, they had special meaning for me, and why don't I try to do that? I'm uniquely qualified, and maybe the generation behind me can enjoy the stuff that I write. So, uh, anyway, I was convinced that you were known, I was convinced you were known for the B movie. I thought that was the one that... Uh, that is, according to my kids, the biggest meme. Yeah. My dad wrote the biggest meme with his friends, and I don't know if they're making fun of me or they're actually <laughs> excited about it, and I don't care. But yeah, uh, some some people know me for that as well. Anyway, Fireball, Tony, good to see you guys, and we'll see cool. you out. We'll see you out in Malibu uh, on Sunday at some point. Hey, Tony. Right. Absolutely. Thank you, Spike. Absolutely. All right. Thanks Pleasure. a lot. And we're back. Hey. Um, next week we have uh, Kevin Hart. Um, and uh, he's got a new show on Motor Trend. What is the name of it? It's called like Kevin Hart's Muscle Cars or something. Kevin Hart Muscles Car. Yeah. Muscle and, cars. and somebody was saying that, you know, Matt Farah was saying that, um, you know, they, they can't afford to pay people to do these car shows anymore. Well, I guarantee Whoa, you. They're paying him. <laughs> they're paying him <laughs> a lot of money yeah. because Kevin Hart would not get out of bed. For uh, ten thousand dollars, I would him. I would guess it's fifty to hundred an episode, but we'll, maybe we'll find that out. Ask him. That's a good maybe lead off we'll, question. We'll How start rich off, are you? Yes, exactly. <laughs> How much did you pull out of the motor trend? They've got money. Sure, they're I paying mean, it's discovery. you. Discovery. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean. <laughs> oh yeah. Right. It's discovery. Yeah. yeah there you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we'll see you next week on the show, guys. Um, that's all. Goodbye. Thanks for listening to Spikes Car Radio, brought to you by Hangar Fifty Six. Listen to new episodes every Wednesday and be sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your favorite podcasts. Ever tried reading while jogging, cooking, or even juggling flaming torches? Yeah, it doesn't end well. But with Audiobooks.com, you can conquer books without the circus act. Dive into over 450,000 titles, including more than 10,000 free ones. Get hooked on a bestseller, find your next obsession, or finally read that classic you've been avoiding since high school. And here's the inside scoop. Sign up today for a free 30-day trial and snag your first three audiobooks on the house. Sign up for your free trial at audiobooks.com slash podcast free today. That's audiobooks.com slash podcast F-R-E-E.